the efficiency of solar plants really is influenced from decisions that are taken well before any operation commences. Um, during project development, during designing phase, it's absolutely critical that we embed lesson learned from operation and maintenance operation. We are already into the third year of a decade within which we want to reach the terawatt solar level in Europe if we want to stay on track with the Paris Agreement and the 1.5 degrees path. On top of that, we want to add more terawatts after that decade in order to become completely climate neutral. And at the same time, it's also imperative to expand solar energy to ensure peace with energy independence. Now, of course, there are different bottlenecks and challenges. Some pressing issues are the compatibility between quality and quantity, growing demands on increasing the efficiency and improving the sustainability in PV. And of course, bankability also is a question when it comes to PV projects to achieve the quality path in Europe. We'll find out in this episode. Welcome to the Smartery Podcast, a podcast for and with the creators of the new energy world. A world in which energy will be renewable, decentralized and digital, bringing together electricity, heat and mobility. Let us show you how we will get there and who will get us there. Adele Ara, my guest today, is the head of global business operations at LightSource BP. With 5.7 gigawatts of solar power developed in more than 19 countries worldwide, LightSource is a global leader in solar development, management and operations. Hence, Adele should have all the answers we're looking for for this episode. Welcome, Adele. Welcome and thank you very much for having me today. I know that um, you also previously led a team uh, managing more than 900 megawatt solar PV assets globally. So what's your secret sauce and what are the key challenges when it comes to ensuring the efficiency of PV projects? Comparatively to other uh, power plants, um, solar PV is always considered very simple. But actually, throughout the course of our experience, we realize how careful operation and very specific oversight is absolutely critical to the efficiency of the plants. Often financial investors tend to consider that the simplicity of the power plants when it's powered by solar um, does not necessarily require the same level of attention and care. Well, this is a bit of a myth. Unfortunately, it does not only take the sun to shine, it actually takes quite a lot of careful ownership and accountability when it comes to manage these plants. The efficiency of solar plants really is influenced from decisions that are taken well before any operation commences. During project development, during designing phase, it's absolutely critical that we embed lesson learned from operation and maintenance operation. At the beginning of the history of our industry, there was a bit of a trade-off between designing a power plant for operation and designing a power plant to maximize capacity. We have thankfully gone over this dichotomy and we are now very much looking at how we design sites for longevity, operation and reliability. And the second step that really influences efficiency very much along the life cycle of projects is the quality of installation. Um, shortcutting the quality of installation and the quality of components uh, is really a red herring uh, and is a very short-sighted um, way of looking at the overall profitability of, of plants. So cutting corners in the early phases of development or during construction is really not the way to ensure longer term efficiency. What we are also discovering is from an operational perspective, there is a lot of digital um, footprint transformation that we can deliver to further our capacity of drive efficiency of projects. Our sites are very peculiar. Sometimes they are distributed generations. Sometimes they are very, very large sites in tens and tens of acres or hectares. Not not all sites are fully manned and the sites that are manned cannot be overseen at the same time at the same place in every single corner of the sites. So having operation and maintenance that rely on data and bespoke um, operation and maintenance arrangement and cycles is very, very important to further the efficiency of the projects. Every project is its own little universe. Every project needs to be treated in a, as bespoke manner as possible. Right Earlier you said that really the key is not to underestimate um, developing a solar project. And you also said that cutting corners in regards to quality management really is not the way to go. Now, on the other hand, we have supply ch chain bottlenecks at the moment when it comes to PV all along the value chain. 
At the same time, the, the targets, the expansion targets are really ambitious. There's multiple project timelines. So is it really possible to go for a really meticulous quality management when it comes to materials and components? Is it realistic at the moment or practically convertible? I would say it is absolutely possible to be meticulous and to be disciplined throughout the entire supply chain and the entire value stream of um, the delivery of a solar project plant. Um, quality management is really essential to guarantee the long-term reliable operation of any PV plants. The dichotomy between cost and quality time and quality is really a smoke and mirrors. As an industry, we are more and more realizing that any marginal investment in quality and meticulous disciplined approach to sites we do during development and design and during the selection of our suppliers and the selection of the technology is actually very much paid back by the longevity operation of the sites. So it is absolutely true that the last 18, 24 months from a supply chain perspective have presented a number of increased challenges to our industry. However, I do not believe that as an industry we have compromised on our selection of top tier components. We have to rely on supply partners that really want to become that, a partner for the solar industry. And quite a lot of the top tier suppliers have really this approach. Of course, sustainability practice as well as health and safety and code of conduct behaviors become very, very important in the selection of this counterparty. Reputable, valuable, industrial side, global size um, suppliers, whether it is panel, whether it is inverters, they very much know that this is the expectation of the business and the general industry. So reality is that the stakes and the game are raising, but we see the suppliers also raising at the same time. And we have to, as the developers, as operator, particularly we have to be careful with our selection when we go out in the market and require funding and financing. Because of course, um, we cannot provide products that are not particularly well designed, not particularly well thought through from a quality perspective, if we wish to receive a minimum level of bankability. So the last 12 months in particular, through Solar Power Europe, for example, on this side of the pond, but through SIA in the in the United States as well, there has been quite a big effort of the solar market, solar developer, solar owner into developing, for example, supply chain transparency and traceability initiatives. This really demonstrates that as an industry, we are eager to raise the bar. And if we are doing that as an industry, then our ability of influencing and helping the supply chain coming along with us is definitely higher. All right, I see. Now, we've been focusing on the quality management in the beginning of the value chain. Um, when we look into PV installations and the skilled labor or highly skilled labor force it takes um, to actually then install the PV correctly and in a way that it lasts very long, what kind of incentives and measures do we need to make sure that quality is given in that bit as well? This is very interesting, I suppose. It's like very many other questions on the solar and generally renewable sector is the more certainty we have that investments in our solar projects uh, will be there, will be supported, there will be appetite for it, the more we can invest volumes into new skilled labor. Now, what is interesting in our industry is that skilled labor can come from two different sources. Of course, new program, new young talent completing their studies, whether academic or vocational, and entering into the industry. And we have quite a lot of attractions, particularly because of the purpose of our industry. But also, there are a lot of additional sectors where skill and knowledge can be applied to solar. Some of the sectors on more traditional generation, even oil and gas experts tend to be attracted to move across to solar. So in this sense, having certainty that our industry will keep on be supportive from an investment perspective gives us enough comfort to keep on growing the skills, cooperate with universities, cooperate with associations that deal with vocational training, but also help people transition from addition sectors into solar. Now, 
what is very interesting is also that we are developing specific competencies that are very much solar focused. You can think about the entire agrivoltaics techniques that is becoming a very interesting and niche set of skills that is really developing alongside solar. But also the digital aspects of things is becoming more and more important. And here we are dragging talents from industries that um, weren't necessarily that related to solar or to energy in general, but are related to data management, to digital transformation. And our ability to attract people is very much related to the purpose of our industry. Delivering as much solar as possible, being part of the energy transition is a great um, force for us to be able to attract skill. But the main point is making sure that our industry is supported and there is still momentum for our industry to be part of the energy of the future. Now, earlier you mentioned bankability and you, you mentioned that bankability is improving and there's steps um, being made to improve bankability. But um, how about simplification of the whole administration um, aspect of it and proving bankability? Are there improvements in sight in the near future? I think it's... Um You know, it really depends. The complexity of, of a bankability solution very often depends on the quality of the portfolio of projects or the projects that you wish to finance. Now, most of the time, and what we see generally in the European market, most of the time, a lot of bankability is related to non-recourse project finance transaction. Now, non-recourse project finance transaction have their own complexity. They are not called structural finance for nothing, not only from a financing perspective, but also from the perspective of continuous monitoring of the operation of the sites. Now, What we have realized over the course of the years is that actually the type of diligence that is requested for a project to be bankable and the type of operational diligence that is requested of the owner of a bankable project actually makes a lot of good sense. We have probably moved away from this constant feel and touch that bankers are being you know, over the top and reasonable on what they ask. A lot of what is required, we find, is actually making a lot of good sense for the health of the projects. Now, the cost associated to that can also be quite mitigated by scale and quite mitigated by automation and digitalization. So really the key we have found is making sure that we are very solid in the technology we are investing in that is proven and making sure that our ways of working when we manage the sites are as industrialized as possible. We have quite a lot to learn, I think, from more traditional power generation, and we have learned a lot from them, and we have demonstrated as an industry to be very flexible and very adaptable. But really, what we are experiencing is that the more we structure our sites with quality in mind, the more we structure our operation with quality in mind, the easier it is to get bankability for projects through. Now, that's quite an interesting angle that you mentioned is that the due diligence in regards to bankability is something that also benefits the project itself because it's money well invested to also ensure like the quality of the project itself. And on the other hand, what's quite interesting, um, like I think for the second or third time, you mentioned again the digitalization coming in play, into play here in automating processes. So that really um, shows how that mega trend also influences the solar industry. And since we speak about mega trends, Another mega trend is sustainability, I guess digitalization and sustainability or the twin transformation as we call it now are the two big things to always focus on in any industry. So how does sustainability come into play when it's about quality management, for example? in the PV value chain? I think sustainability is another very fascinating topic. Um, it, and it reminds me of the earlier conversation we had a few years back around raising the bar on health and safety and raising the bar on quality. Really, quality, safety, sustainability, they go hand in hand. And we have two ways of looking at them. We can look at them as an additional burden or an additional cost, or we can look at them as an opportunity for us to create competitive advantage and to create a competitive differentiator. And I think as an industry, this is really what we are embracing, right? So the solar energy and the plants themselves have a corner of sustainability They produce renewable energy, so they are marked with a sustainable brand anyway. But the components, the panels, the structural the inverters, they are not intrinsically sustainable, right? They have their own carbon footprint. And so we cannot ignore that as an industry, of course. Therefore, back to the point of how we interact with our supply chain, of course, 
sustainability and traceability of where our components come from, how they are built, how they are shipped, how we can recycle from the um, th throughout the life cycle, everything that comes through there is quite, quite important. Now, it is actually quite interesting to look at how sustainability, not only of the components, their recycling and their reuse, but also the sustainability of the plants themselves, again, again with the agrovoltaics, with biodiversity plants, all of these really enrich the financial proposition of the sites. And even more so when we talk about the commissioning and how we look after the, the commissioning of the plant, how we look after the recycling phase after that, or the repowering of the plants too, because there is always an opportunity. And again, quality is very important because the better quality products we put on plants, the more longevity, and therefore we can push forward the decommissioning and delay the decommissioning phase as much as possible and simplify our repowering processes down the line. Therefore, my view on sustainability is very much that it can be a competitive edge for every single player in the industry and for us collectively as an industry. Well, when we started out, you said, you know, that compared to other power sources or means of generating power, solar seems to be fairly simple. Nevertheless, we really managed to touch on quite a plethora of various topics in those last 20 minutes. We spoke about sustainability just now. We talked about digitalization. We talked about the war of talent. We talked about also forcing new connections between suppliers and project developers to really ensure the quality management in the beginning of our talk. So there's really quite a few topics, I guess, to dive into if you really want to take quality management, um, bankability and all these issues to the next level. I know that one perfect opportunity to dive deeper into that is coming up just now, end of January 2023, on the 24th to 25th at the Solar Quality Summit in Barcelona, where I think you also will be taking part. Do you know what visitors can expect at that event? I think what visitors can expect is a very nicely rounded perspective on the different phases of the life cycle of a solar plant. What is very interesting about the event is that it really brings together a representative of multiple roles that are played within the supply chain and the value chain of solar farms. So developers, asset managers, operation and maintenance service provider, as well as um, construction service provider. So I suppose what is interesting is that all of the different components of the value chain of a solar plants will be present and will have a voice. I think people can expect a bit of a sharing of ideas of latest pilots and tech trials. But more importantly, I think knowing some of the panelists that are participating is very much a desire of sharing your experience. As an industry, sometimes I feel we don't share enough and there is a lot that we can learn from each other. If we really want to deliver our 2030 and 2050 targets and we want to be a fundamental part of the energy transition, we need to further increase the pace of, of our deployment. We are going already very fast. We need to make a step change. And sharing with our industry partners, uh, benchmark each other, really will further our ability to grow fast and will further our ability to mature quickly. Therefore, sharing for me will be the key word of, of the summit in Barcelona. Thanks a lot. I think um, to me, it sounded like you gave us basically a perfect teaser to the conference and touched upon all the topics in a nutshell that um, people can dive deeper into then on site. So thanks a lot for joining us today, Adele. Thank you for having me. Detailed presentations from top speakers on solar quality management can be found at the Solar Quality Summit Europe, taking place January 24th to 25th at Hyatt Regency Barcelona Tower. All information about the program and tickets can be found online at solar-quality-summit.com.